Hey guys, good news, it's Friday. And here we are, I'm gonna go over the warm up for today. Um, first question asks, why are moles important? And moles, as you guys are aware, are a counting number that chemists use to simplify large quantities of particles. So we know that for every one mole of any substance, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd particles, right? So it's much easier to use mole um, to represent ratios of particles than it is to actually use the particles themselves because then you start to get into these enormous numbers with crazy amounts of exponents, right? So let's take a look at the chemical reaction Mg, magnesium plus two um, moles of hydrochloric acid yield one mole of hydrogen and one mole of magnesium chloride. Um, so I don't know why I put a space there, but basically I'm gonna go ahead and just rewrite it here. This is already balanced, as you can see. And so what is important here is that the coefficients in this chemical equation represent a ratio. And it's a ratio of the amount of reactants needed to yield a certain amount of products. So this represents a balanced chemical equation wherein the coefficients of each of these formulas represent the number of moles or particles. So I'm going to go ahead and write this in a sentence. One mole of magnesium which is solid, reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid or HCl to yield or form or produce one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of aqueous magnesium chloride. Now obviously I didn't put the subscripts in there so I'm just doing that based on memory. Um, but what this represents is an ideal reaction wherein we have a ratio of the number of moles or particles of each of our ingredients, right? So it's kind of like a recipe, but in this case it's a recipe for a chemical change as opposed to a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. Um, so let's look at the relationship between them the reactants on a graph. Um, you did this with the electrolysis of water lab. Here we're doing it for magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid. Same concept, um, if we were to collect data from this experiment, you would see that for every one magnesium atoms, there are two hydrochloric acid particles needed. So for every two magnesium, we would need four hydrochloric acid particles. And so when we graph this, the slope on this graph represents that ratio, right? The slope on the graph is a ratio of one to two. In other words, a ratio of our coefficients, right? And so we can write that ratio to show the relationship between numbers of moles or particles. So for every one mole of magnesium, there are two moles of hydrochloric acid required to yield hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride. This is an equality. And what that means is that we can flip, sorry, we can flip that ratio and it means the same thing. So for every two moles of hydrochloric acid, you would need one mole of magnesium to yield a certain amount of hydrogen gas and magnesium chloride, right? Does that make sense? Hopefully. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and particle diagram this reaction. Um, and kids have struggled a bit with this, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a key. Here's your magnesium, and then we'll use a different color for hydrogen, and we'll use a different color for chlorine. You could also use different shapes, same idea. And so in this reaction, we're going to produce two particles of magnesium chloride. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Um, so over here in the products, I'm going to have, here's your magnesium. And then for every one magnesium in that formula, you have two chlorine. So that would represent one magnesium chloride particle. But obviously there are two. So I'm going to draw two of these. You could either connect particles or draw those lines that represent bonds. All right, you get the idea. So when we look at our, our ratio of particles, we also have to consider that for every two magnesium chloride, there would be an equal number of hydrogen particles because the ratio of magnesium chloride to hydrogen is a one-to-one -one ratio, right? The coefficients are both one. So we're going to go ahead and then look at the reactants that would be required to form those products. So what else in the reactants has a coefficient of one? Well, that's easy, that's magnesium. So if we're producing two magnesium chloride particles, we would need how many magnesium atoms to do that? Over here, we would need two magnesium atoms to yield two magnesium chloride particles in the products. Now, Here's where things get a little bit tricky in that if you look at your hydrochloric acid, while all the other coefficients are one, hydrochloric acid, HCl, has a coefficient of two. So what that means is that you would need two times two or twice as many particles of HCl. So you would need four HCl particles, and again, this is a compound, so we're going to draw these close together. And what you should see here is that when we compare the number and type of particles in the reactants, they are the same as the number and type of particles in the products. So the particles are rearranged, obviously, but they are conserved because when all else fails, we should always follow the law, which is LOCOM forever, law of conservation of mass, law of conservation of particles. All right. So we have shown here the graphical relationship between um, reactants, and we're also showing here the visual representation through a particle diagram for those reactants. And now we're going to solve it mathematically. So we got visual, we got graphical, we got um, mathematical. So here, what we're going to do is the question is asking if you reacted 0.25 moles of hydrochloric acid, HCl, how many moles of hydrogen would you make? So we always start with our given. And then we're asked to solve for the moles of hydrogen, right? So we're going to look at a mole ratio using our balanced chemical equation that compares HCl to hydrogen. And if you look up here, we know that for every two moles of hydrochloric acid, we produce one mole 
of hydrogen gas. Again, just a ratio of those coefficients. And so the moles of HCl will cancel. You're going to multiply 0.25 by 1 and then divide by 2. And you get, for that answer, 0.125 moles of hydrogen gas. And that's it. Now we could do that for um, also the moles of magnesium chloride. I'll do that real quick. So here the ratio would just change because instead of hydrogen gas, we know for every two moles of HCl, we are producing one mole of magnesium chloride. So again, you're going to end up with the same answer because that ratio of moles is the same. So the point of this warm-up is to show you that we can use moles in chemical reactions to convert from a reactant to a product or from a product back to a reactant knowing that the coefficients represent an ideal reaction and that those coefficients can be substituted for number of moles or particles um, to convert from one compound to another through your balanced chemical equation. So we're going to continue to do this next week. I miss you. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope it's sunny because I definitely need to go outside. It's been kind of gray and dreary. And everybody needs a little sunshine in this apocalyptic virtual reality here. So, peace, love, rock and roll, sunshine, all good things. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you soon. Bye.